Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Parker House Rolls. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make America's most popular dinner roll and also one of the oldest dinner roll recipes. In fact, when this was first published, the internet was actually printed on paper and bound in books and people's Instagram pictures had to be framed and hung on the wall. Oh yeah, you kids have no idea. But anyway, these are very simple to make. And everybody, and I mean everybody, loves a Parker House roll. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with this rather rich dough, which is going to start with some warm milk. And then we'll also do an equal amount of equally warm water, at which point we'll sprinkle over one package of active dry yeast. And we will let that sit there getting a head start for about 10 minutes, during which time we'll pull the rest of our ingredients together. And those will include two large whole eggs. And then we'll also want to toss in a touch of sugar and of course a little bit of salt followed by a very generous amount of melted butter. All right, we're going to do an entire stick and then what we'll do is take a whisk and give this a very quick mix before we add in the last ingredient which is going to be some all-purpose flour and that's going to be it for our dough ingredients. And we will lower our dough hook in and we will knead this for about five or six minutes until it pulls together into a nice ball of dough and because this is a very rich mixture with the eggs and the butter, do not be surprised if you have a little bit of dough smearing on the sides of the bowl. Okay, hopefully that eventually pulls off. But if it doesn't, just use your spatula and scrape it down and keep kneading. And what we're shooting for here is something that's very soft and smooth and supple and fairly elastic. And when it's done, it hopefully looks and feels something like this, which is going to be a lot easier to see when I eventually get it off the stand mixer and transfer it onto my work surface. Okay, so if everything goes according to plan, this is what we should end up with. And man, does that feel good. Okay, it almost feels too good. And then once we do have a supple, soft ball of dough like this, we'll go ahead and place that back in our bowl, which we've lightly buttered, and we will cover it. And we'll let that rise for a couple hours, or until it doubles in size. And as you might know, rich doughs take a little longer to rise, so if after two hours you don't think yours is done, let it go. But after a couple hours, mine was looking really good, which means we can transfer it onto a work surface and we will press out all the air with our hands, which in the business we call degassing. And once we have that pressed into some kind of uniform shape, we will attempt to divide it into 24 equal pieces, which you can do by eye, but to get them exact, go ahead and use this scale and divide by 24. But regardless, once each portion is cut, we'll go ahead and roll that into a ball on the table, cupping it with our hand like we always do to get a nice smooth surface. And we will transfer those onto a Silpat line baking sheet, at which point we could just proof these and bake them and have round dinner rolls. But let me go ahead and show you how to work this into a more traditional Parker House roll shape. And to do that, we will roll each ball on a lightly floured surface into an oval about five inches long or so, and then what we'll do is brush butter over the surface and simply fold it in half. And by the way, for filming purposes, I'm using this plate to butter on so I don't get butter where I'm going to roll the dough. So just in case you were wondering. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and fold that in half. And that for me is the simplest way to form these. But there are countless other ways. And if you do an image search, you'll see what I mean. All right, some people like to roll these up with the seam on the bottom. Whereas other people like to fold the top over past the edge. And still others that take the opposite approach and only fold the top over halfway so that the two pieces sort of separate as it bakes. But as you can see, I like to fold mine perfectly even, which I think gives these a nice uniform shape, plus produces the perfect shape and size to make little sandwiches with the leftover meat we usually serve these with. And as you can see, if you roll them the same size I do, 24 should fit very nicely on a sheet pan. And by the way, if you want a taller, fatter roll, just don't roll yours out as large and flat as I am. Right, make a smaller oval and then fold it over and you'll have something a little thicker that will bake up a little taller. And that's it. Once that's been accomplished, we will cover these with a towel and we'll let them sit in a warm spot for about an hour or until they just about double in size. Oh, and quick production note, it got totally dark while I was filming this. So if you notice that the lighting changes and the shadows get more severe, that's why. And after just over an hour, mine looked like this. And that's it, once proofed, these are now ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes or until beautifully golden brown 
and hopefully looking like this. Oh yeah, even though my kitchen is totally dark and I'm just using studio lights, I still think these look absolutely gorgeous. But hang on, they're going to look even better. Because if you're going to call these Parker House rolls and keep a straight face, they must be brushed while still warm with copious amounts of butter. Okay, so don't be shy. And be sure to give these a very, very generous brushing. Oh, and regarding the appearance, I prefer to cook mine at 350, but there are some chefs that do prefer 375 or 400, which will produce the same interior, but with a darker, more deep brown crust. So if you're into that, go ahead and raise your oven temp. I mean, you are after all the Harvey Parker, of whether these should be a little bit darker, but personally I do enjoy the golden brown, so I go 350. And that's it, once buttered, we can go ahead and serve these up. I know I usually say to let things cool all the way down, but with these it's completely appropriate and probably recommended to serve them warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one and do just that. And that, my friends, is just a tremendous dinner roll. Okay, these are feather light, while at the same time being very rich and buttery. And not only buttery from the butter in the dough and the butter we brushed on top, but also from that buttery seam in the middle. So there's really no surprise why these became so popular. Oh, and I usually just leave these on the pan or toss them in a bread basket. So the only reason I'm transferring them onto this rack is because the lighting was so bad. I thought the pictures might look a little better if they weren't on the pan, but they really didn't. Okay, I have some nice lights, but there is no substitute for natural light. But that's okay. I went ahead and ate another one anyway. Oh, and you can see how perfectly these open. As I mentioned earlier, that's exactly why I shape them like I do. Right, done like this, they have the perfect shape to make adorable little sandwiches with that leftover ham or turkey or roast beef or whatever we serve these with. And then what I did is wrap these up and then the next day, I reheated these at 350 for about 10 minutes, which is what you'll do if you make them ahead. And I popped them into this basket and took some more pictures. And yes, I also ate one more. So I would have some footage and time to tell you that these really truly are an amazing dinner roll as well as an easy dinner roll which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual and as always enjoy.